The sad thing is that, look at these statistics. 43% of U.S. children live without a father. Fatherless homes produce 63% of youth suicide. 90% of all homeless and run runaway children come from fatherless homes. 85% of children with behavioral disorders come from homes without fathers. 80% of rapists and anger problems, those with anger and rape, rapists, come from homes that did not have a father. 71% of all high school dropouts came from homes that did not have a father. This came from uh, the, the first statistic there of 43% came from the U.S. Um, Census Bureau. These are questions, and, and 2008 was the last time they did it. I don't think they'd even, that is politically incorrect to even count this fact. You will find a lot of these facts buried away because it does not bode well for America, especially when they say the government is able to raise your children. When they say that men and women are the same and that you can mix it up and do him and her or her and her or him and him and either one your children will turn out the same. No. When a father, a male presence who is loving and nurturing and providing is not in the home, the statistics show that we are on a decline. We are the worst in the world when it comes to percentages of fatherless homes. Might be the richest country in the world, but I tell you what, we are in some ways the poorest when it comes to the quotient of fathers. 71% of all high school dropouts, no father. 75% of all adolescent patients in chemical abuse centers, those with drug problems, no fathers in the home. 85% of all youths in prison had no fathers. Do you see a trend here? And a sad thing is that 72% of the children of Afri in the African-American community are raised in fatherless homes. I don't think that it is a race thing as much as a fatherless problem. Why so much of the black community had, are, are suffer from some of all of these things. Even the leaders in the, in the black community, like, uh, who's that comedian that everybody mocks me, I like, Cosby, dared to say these kind of words. And people clicked their tongue and said, don't say that information. But I tell you what, there was a father who dared stand up and tell the truth the way it is. We need to have fathers. Today is a good day. I don't want to, to bring you down with all these statistics because I want to show you that no matter what your experience may be, whether you had a father, though he was present in the home, was absent for you emotionally. Whether you are a victim of a youth that did not, a childhood, who did not have a father. No matter, I'm going to introduce to you and show you your perfect father. You, we all in this room, have a perfect father who loves us. It says in John 14, 8 through 10, Philip said to him, Lord, show us the father, and it is enough for us. And Jesus said to him, have I been with you so long that you still don't know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? That the words that I say to you, I do not speak of my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his work. Your emotional well-being, your security in life, and your hope for the future requires that you Come to a place of trust and rest in a father's love. You cannot get past this deficit of being fatherless and expect to have life that is fulfilled and be a productive member in the society. You need to have a father. But the good thing is, you have a father. 
You have a father who thought and planned you whether you were an unplanned pregnancy. He knew you before not one breath was drawn and that he cares for you. He loves you. You have a father who tenderly cares for you and loves you. In fact, Romans 8 verse 15 says this, you have received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The word Abba, Father is an Aramaic word which literally means daddy or papa. Extremely endearing words. The Apostle Paul was saying that when you accepted Jesus Christ into your heart, you were adopted into, intentionally chosen to be part of God's family. And the relationship that the Father in heaven wants to have with you is so deep and tender that he wants you to think of him as your papa, as your daddy. This is what your father, who may not, you can't see him with your physical eyes, though at times you have seen his goodness and kindness in your life. And even the times when you think that, that you're alone, believe me, his watchful, attentive eye is on you. And he is pulling you and drawing you toward himself.